All right, let's bring in uh, Mike Krzyzewski, the Duke head coach, and once again, the U.S. Olympic head coach. He joins us now. Okay, at what point did you say, I'm going to take this job after telling everybody there was no chance you were going to be at the Olympic team? Well, I didn't tell everybody. I just told people who asked me. Okay, that's a lot because I asked well, you. But, and... No, but there's a big difference, okay. isn't there? I um, mean, you... I didn't make, you know. I, I think there's a difference. Okay, you told me, therefore, a lot of people heard you tell me, so you're sort of telling them So you're to... assuming that a lot of people listen to yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. An awful lot, especially right now with you on. <laughs> well, to get back to your question, uh, it's like a little bit more of a process, and as the process went along, I, I felt it would it would be the right decision, but until I completed the process, I wasn't completely sure. And uh, I wanted to make sure I uh, weighed in with everybody, especially my family. And uh, then, uh, I, you know, I feel great about making the decision. And, um, you know, I, right after, right, actually right before London, when I said I wouldn't do it again, yeah, you know, I, I felt that I wouldn't, and even after London, and and I thought it was a good time for USA Basketball just to assess where they're going and me to assess where where I was going, and that goes not only for me, but it goes for every player that uh, that commits. They need to step back and say, do I really want to do this again? And then once they say they're going to do it, then you have someone who's fully committed, and uh, that's what USA Basketball deserves. What effect does this have on your your Duke career? Well, I think it's lengthened my Duke career, uh, Dan. Really, I I'm more energized. Uh, I feel great about coaching, and uh, I think I'm in really good health. And um, I'm not tired of coaching. This this is uh, this is exciting, and coaching at Duke is exciting. And so I, I think it's helped me immensely. I didn't know if, if this, is, this is a scenario I have, and that is that you saw Chris Collins, one of your top assistants, took the Northwestern job. You know that uh, you got Wojo there and waiting to take over, if that's the case. Maybe two, three more years, you coach, you coach the Olympic team, and you're able to complete your coaching career. Far-fetched? No, but it, will, it will go at least uh, through... Uh, the, the Olympics in Rio. In other words, I wouldn't stop coaching at Duke while I was still the national coach because I think you have to stay sharp and coaching in this conference, especially the conference. We're going to have, I think, the greatest conference ever, you know, uh, with all the new additions. And and um, it, 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 you need to be sharp. Yeah, I don't think you can just coach the national team. And so – and then – I'll see, you know, I'll be right around 70 then. And uh, do I want to, you know, how's my health and everything. But right now I'm, I'm, I don't look at, uh, I know nothing will happen before then unless something health wise happens. But if you coach through the Olympics and coach one more year at Duke after that, and then, I mean, is that the scenario that seems at well, least I plausible? I, I, I don't, you know, I don't do scenarios, okay. you know, I, you know, I, I just kind of, I think each year you take a look at it. But now that making the commitment to go to the Olympics, I know for that I'm going to be doing this and, and what I love to do at Duke through that. And I could do that longer, you know. Uh, um, so uh, that's how I feel right now. And, you know, I'll, I'll be at a place. Look, Duke has been great to me. And I, I, I've been really good for Duke, and it's been an unbelievable, uh, unbelievable team, you know, uh, our program and Duke University. So we're going to take that as long as it possibly can go. I know you talked about loyalty with teams, schools leaving, you know, coming and going, musical chairs here. And here's the ACC that you are benefiting by this game of musical chairs. You just said we're going to have the best basketball conference in the country. Are we done with this, with conference realignment? No, I don't think we are. And uh, I think our conference is at least, as far as people leaving, uh, you know, with the uh, with the new agreement, the grant and rights, 
you know, that can follow a team if they lose, uh, if they leave your uh, your conference, you, they don't take their media rights with them for as long as that they're in that contract. So, you know, pretty much the, the conferences that have that going for them, they're, they're not going to lose people. Now, they could add, and what you see now happening, it doesn't get the attention, but you – uh, you see a Davidson go to the Atlantic 10, and, and again, nationally, maybe people don't pay attention to this as much, but it, it's happening all over. Elon is going from the big south to the colonial. Uh, there's th- these ripples of what's happened that all these conferences have produced other decisions. And, uh, and so all of that is not done. I mean, the water is not smooth yet mm. by far. And I still think there can be some big splashes. There can be... Yeah, you know, I, I I still think that the Pac-12 at some time will get bigger. Uh, and who do you think they add? Well, I, I I think the most volatile you know situation is in the midsection of our country. I mean that that's where teams have gone to. Uh, they've gone to two different conferences. They've gone to the Big Ten and they've gone to uh, the Southeast Conference. And and so, you know, what will happen there in in the future? You know, the uh, when you look at the landscape of collegiate athletics, you know, the the, the plums that are you know, you look at big programs, and, and you know, that area of the country will always you know, be the big factor there will be Texas all the time. You because, see Texas possibly, uh, you know, well, they... Well, I, I think they could do what they're doing right now. What I'm saying is they will be always somebody that is coveted, you know, because they, they, they're they just, they're a big-time program. And uh, so I, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying that that's more apt to happen than some other things. And... Uh, but it's not over, I don't think. Uh, he's Mike Krzyzewski, the Duke head coach, and once again, the U.S. Olympic head coach, joining us, Dan Patrick show. If you could start an NBA team with mm-hmm. anybody, Phil Jackson was asked this question recently by Time Magazine. I'll ask you. One player that you're starting your NBA team with. Well, he would have a better uh, opinion of it because he's <laughs> – He's won 11 championships, and I've never coached in the NBA. But you still um, play. You no, coached I'm just, against I'm him. just putting it in context. You know, that one person's opinion, you know, like if my opinion would probably be better than his in, as far as college was concerned. Uh, but if I was starting up, I'd always, you know, right now, it's, you start with LeBron because he's still going to be the best player. No, for but a long all time. Long. All time. Oh, all time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know. Jordan or Russell, okay. Probably those those two, Jordan or Russell, two of the you know the biggest winner of all time and the biggest competitor, maybe the best player, probably the best player in Jordan. What about if you were starting your college program? And who would I pick from? From guys who and, just went to college? Yeah, guys who went to college. Oh. Jeez. But knowing how they played in college, because obviously, yeah. Michael, well, you would you would want at that time El Cinder, or you know Jabbar now, but El Cinder, uh, or or Walton. To me, they were the you know the two, and then again, Russell, Russell. You know, you would start a center. You would go with a center, and those would probably be the three. They'd probably be the three greatest centers in the history of collegiate basketball. And uh, and then two of them became two of the best of ever the NBA. in the NBA. And Bill's career was shortened because of injury. What yeah, but best high school player you ever, ever saw? The best high school player that I saw was Kobe. I didn't see Jordan play. What about Kenny Anderson? No, Kenny Anderson was really good. Yeah, you know, but I recruited him and Hurley at the same time. And, chose to go with Hurley. And not that Kenny would have come to Duke, but uh, I just thought Bobby would be amazing for us, and it was one of the times I was right. Did you recruit Jordan? 
Uh, we looked at him, you know, like no one, you know, he was kind of going to go to North Carolina. So I didn't really follow him that much. No one knew he was going to be that good. Mm-hmm. I, and, you know, he, he, you know, he grew and then, you know, I think Dean did a great job with him. And But the, the main guy who did a great job was Michael. You know, Michael just, you know, benefited from being at North Carolina's program and playing for one of the great coaches of all time and learning the game, uh, the team game. Uh, you know, he benefited greatly from being in college. How do you temper the expectations with Jabari Parker when you're already being labeled the next LeBron? That's you know, that's a that's yeah, a heavy well, headline there. Yeah, well, you know, our 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 culture right now is, is big on uh, movie previews more so than the movie, <laughs> and uh, you know, we we really hype the movie, and just so we get a, a good first weekend audience, and then the yeah, you know, and. So understanding the culture, I think, is important, and yeah, he'll handle. He's had to handle that his whole life, and uh, and just try to give him an environment where he can instinctively react, and you know, in all aspects on the court, because he's a Jabari's a very, very versatile basketball player, and uh, and so I'll, I'll make sure that he's you know he's given an opportunity to show his stuff in, in, in all parts of the court and both offensively and defensively and he'll respond. Yeah, you know, Jabari's gonna be one of the really, really outstanding players and a a great college player and I think eventually a great pro player. Now before I let you go, who retires first, you or Grant Hill? Oh, Grant Hill retire from playing and co- and him retiring from playing and me from coaching. Yeah. Yeah, no, Grant. Oh, he will. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he. You know, that's not even a race. It's not. It's the one time in my life where I just kick his butt in that in that regard. It's over. Uh, I'm. I just talked to him a few days ago. I, I'm hoping that he'll he'll play at least another year because I I, I think he's he's awesome. Yeah, he's the he's he's a great great guy. He's the best. He's. Uh, they should all be like him. And uh, you know, yeah. You you should. I'm glad that we have the same opinion on somebody. Well, and, uh, wait. We both it, don't like Leitner. We both like Grant. No, 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 no. Oh, you're wait. wrong. Oh no. You're wrong. I. I you're right. I don't <laughs> like Leitner. I love, love Leitner. him. Exactly. Yeah. We, so is that what you're saying? Yes. That you love him. We both think I'm a great it, broadcaster. No. Uh, Wow, that's awkward. That is very awkward. Right? And I've always been truthful. I think your quest to become great is is admirable. I have a Jordan quest to be great. Yeah, you know, just so... Eddie Jordan, by the way, not Michael Jordan. <laughs> I don't want, you know, the one thing, you're a friend, I, I, I don't want you to be disappointed. I know, so I know. Don't set your goals too high. Yeah, G- reachable goals are what we want. Not- I'm going to be your worst nightmare. When I'm done with this, I'm going to do local TV in Durham, North Carolina. We, we have good people. Yeah, in- that's why I'm going to be there in your backyard. It's too competitive. You <laughs> keep your job. <laughs> keep your job. It's too competitive. Uh, good to talk to you. Congrats All on, right. on the new job or the old job. And uh, thanks for joining us. All right, Dan. Thanks. All right, that's uh, Mike Krzyzewski, Duke head coach, Team USA.